Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing. I find this so amusing. For those who know, well, you know. Uh, but for those who don't know, it's 72,186. It's not massive, is it? I mean, if it was pounds in the bank, it would be nice. But if it's, when it's members of a political party, it's pathetic. So 72,000 people are eligible to vote to lead uh, to see the leader of the SNP uh, and presumably then Scotland's next first minister. And if you only get sort of uh, just over half of that, which it will be, uh, you're looking at 36,000 people in the entire country electing its leader. Uh, doesn't sort of shout out that this is democratic in any way. There's no sort of legitimacy. There's no mandate. Uh, and so presumably uh, the first job, whoever emerges as leader, the first job they'll do is call an election to show that they can uh, have a former party, former government and have the mandate of the people. Of course, they won't do that, will they? They're craven cowards who know that they'll get their asses whipped. But that's how it goes. So we'll have a look at this article to see what's going on, where it's all gone wrong, why the numbers are pathetic. And I did a video the other day, uh, where it was yesterday, uh, where I said that it was possibly uh, not, these numbers were possibly not released because it was embarrassing or because it was corrupt. Um, it's definitely, definitely embarrassing. But I'm not taking corruption off the table and you'll see why. So let's get into this article now and have a look. So the SNP finally releases the current membership figures showing a huge drop since 2021. Membership of the SNP has plummeted by more than 30,000 in just over a year, the party has confirmed, after it was forced to reveal the figures following a new row over transparency. It's lost a third of its membership in a year. Now, we have a look at that year, and what we're seeing is identity politics. We're seeing gender rows. We're seeing the destruction of Scottish industry. We're seeing the, the, the cancellation of the ferries, or the, the massive problems with the ferry service. Everything going wrong. People were dis disillusioned with the SNP, and rightly so. There is nothing there that would illusion you in the first place surely. Uh, but they've lost all these people. Now they say, that, oh, we have a hundred odd thousand uh, members. Uh, no, you don't. It is now down. It's officially 72,186. And that is a very, very strange thing because that's not the number of votes they've sent out. But anyway, the party said that the total number of eligible ballots for ongoing leadership contest is 72,000 186. The, the SNP had around 104,000 members in December 21. So in what, 12, 13, 14, 15 months, in 15 months, they've lost uh, 30, what, 32,000 members. So it's about a third, uh, about a third of the party have gone uh, in, in sort of 15 months. That is immense. Um, when you're losing 2,000 members a month, you know something is going awry. Uh, but then you look, like I say, at what's going on and it's not surprising because people aren't stupid. People see what's going on. They see what your party stands for and they see what you're doing and they reject you. You stand there. Sturgeon is to blame, of course. Sturgeon stands there. She's made this deal with the Greens um, and the Greens will do this and the Greens will do that. And in order to keep them on side, to keep her in power, she's bending over backwards to, you know, to accommodate the Greens and the Greens want this and the Greens want that and the Greens want the bottle scheme uh, which is an abject failure and the Greens want gender pushed to the front and having men who pretend to be women made very much more important than everyone else and she's trying to oblige them to keep power but it's all fallen apart because most people in Scotland reject these things they do not want their children exposed to shall we say provocative uh, descriptions and imagery uh, in schools because the Greens insist that, you know, uh, drag queens must be put into schools to talk about masturbation, for example. People reject it. People look at the stupidity of things that will cost them jobs and they reject it. People look at the falling standards of the massive wait lists in the, in the NHS and they reject it. And they look at the failed ferry scheme and they reject it. In fact, they're looking at everything the SNP does and en masse are rejecting it. And so it's not surprising their numbers are falling and that they're a failing party who more and more each day increasingly fail to reflect the needs, desires and wants of the people of Scotland. Anyway, Hamza Youssef 
Kate Forbes and Ash Regan had all called on the party to release details of how many people are eligible to vote in the bitter leadership contest. Uh, and to be honest, Peter Murrell did not want to release them because he knew it would be embarrassing uh, and it would embarrass his pretend wife because uh, that fall had all occurred on her watch. Anyway, Michelle Thompson, manager of Miss Forbes' campaign, said the plummeting figures show the party needs a change in direction. She said we need candour on the challenges facing the party and the government, but we also need the competence to fix them. And that's where you're buggered, isn't it? You haven't got the competence. You have the desire, maybe. I'll give Kate Forbes her due. She does have the desire to re to, to recognise the fact. Well, she first of all, she recognises the fact that there must be change. And she says she has the desire to change it. But it's that competence word, isn't it? That, that word competence is doing a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence. Uh, there's no one in the SNP competent to do it. If you look, look at the likes of Hamza Yousaf and think of everything he's touched has turned to shit, really. Uh, and he's supposedly one of the best the party's got to offer. God help us. Anyway, former First Minister Alex Salmond, who now leads the pro-independence Alba party, tweeted, it takes decades to build a political party, but days to destroy one. Yeah, and she's done that, hasn't she? She's been brilliant for that. Uh, both Miss Forbes and Miss Regan have called for an independent audit of the leadership vote amid concerns over transparency and the integrity of the process. However, Mr Youssef, who is seen as the establishment choice, has warned against indulging in baseless smears. Well, no, not really. It's not baseless uh, when all these people are leaving. There must be a reason why they're leaving and any leader needs to know why. So yes, let's have an investigation. Let's see why people increasingly reject the SNP. Questioned by journalists in the Scottish Parliament, Nicola Sturgeon said she had full confidence in the integrity of the vote and denied her party is in crisis. She has lived in denial for years. Uh, and it does. if she's got confidence in, in the integrity of the vote, it's only because she's got confidence that her husband, her pretend husband, has fixed it. That's all. Uh, asked if there is needed to be an independent auditor, Miss Sturgeon, who announced her surprise resignation last month, said, uh, well, it wasn't that surprising. Now that we look back, she's obviously seen the figures and thought, I'm getting out of here uh, so that the, the drop in the party membership isn't seen as my action. You know, uh, it will be released in the act in the days of the new uh, leader. Uh, it'll be tagged to them. But it isn't. It's no running away from this one, Sturgeon. You have destroyed the party. She said that there is an independent company that oversees the process. And she said it was the same process that's been used in previous internal elections, including three deputy leadership contests. After the concerns were Trumpian, Ms Sturgeon said it is incumbent on those raising them to be specific. She said it is a tried and tested system. I have confidence. I'm 100% confidence in the integrity of that system, so long as it produces the results she wants. Uh, the moment it fails to do so, if, for example, Kate Forbes becomes leader, then she'll start questioning that system and demand that it's changed. Because if you can't control the vote, what's the point of having them? Uh, anyway, the election process is being carried out by My Voice, an election ser service firm based in Southampton. Voting began earlier this week in the race to replace Miss Sturgeon as the party's leader and first minister, with members having the choice of voting electronically or on paper. However, the exact size of the electorate was unclear and the Mail on Sunday reported at the weekend that 78,000 online forms were being sent out, but the party refused to confirm this. It also rubbished a report on the Sunday Mail last night, last night that the membership had dropped by 30,000. They're right, it didn't drop by 30,000. They, they, they were right to rubbish that claim that it had dropped by 30,000 30, members. It has dropped by 32,000 members. Let's let's be clear on that. Uh, so they're rubbishing the claim that it's dropped by 30,000. And they're also rubbishing the number that 78,000 uh, has uh, have been sent out. You can guarantee that it was more than 78,000, uh, which means six, at least 6,000 people will be voting whilst not eligible to do so. Uh, and that would mean that the result is going to be wrong. Whatever the result is, it cannot be the correct result. Uh, unless you re, you know, you pull these these back and send them out again, but this time only to registered voters. And the election must show that seventy eight thousand uh, were sent out, or seventy two thousand one hundred and eighty six went out, and that they've all come back either one, two, three, and no vote. You know, they they must be returned. Anyone failing to return needs to be questioned as why, because they are after all members 
um, and find out what the exact number is. And it will be very, very surprising if this vote is anything other than a complete farce. Uh, and I do believe, firmly believe, that it will end up going to a court case. I think that there is going to be enough confusion uh, and um, possible corruption or possible mistakes being made, either accidentally or deliberately, that this result cannot stand. Anyway, um, regardless of who wins, I mean, regardless, I think if, if, it won't be Ash Regan, but regardless of the other two, if it's Hamza Yousaf or Kate Forbes, regardless of which one wins, I think the other one will challenge it. Uh, uh, anyway, Miss Regan, the former Community Safety Minister who quit in opposition to the Scottish Government's gender reforms, wrote to the SNP Chief Executive Peter Murrell, on behalf of the most honest man in Scottish politics, on behalf of Miss Forbes and her own campaigns. No, he really is the most honest man in politics. The three uh, police investigations are merely uh, a, a side issue. There's nothing there to look at. Please move along. Uh, following the release of the membership figures, Miss Regan's team said this victory for transparency demonstrates once again that Ash Regan is the candidate who gets things done. Uh, they linked the reduction in membership to Miss Sturgeon's gender reforms, which were voted through Holyrood before Christmas, but have since been blocked by the UK government. Uh, not, blo uh, not voted on by Hamza Yousaf, who mysteriously ran away and hid at the time of that particular vote. Uh, Miss Regan said the SNP has a, tradition, has a tradition of attracting independent-minded and smart people to work together for Scotland. Well, can't be that smart, can they? They, they vote SNP. Uh, we've lost some good people and I want to see us build our membership numbers and attract people back to the party. The SNP I lead will recognise the hard work and dedication of our activists as they continue to fail in everything that they do. NHS, transport, the economy, social care, tra uh, everything. I can't. Uh, there is not one area of government responsibility that the SNP hasn't destroyed or mucked up in some way. Anyway, an SNP spokeswoman said... After many years of delivering for people across Scotland and working towards a better future as an independent country, the SNP remains the biggest and indeed the only mass membership party in Scotland. And we remain grateful to our large and committed membership for all their support, which has done so much to fuel our electoral success. 72,000 out of a population of about 6 million. It's not big, is it? It's pretty pathetic. It's pretty damn pathetic. Uh, anyway... The party said that the figures uh, do not include anyone who joined the SNP after the February the 15th and is therefore not eligible for a ballot. And it said membership numbers fluctuate month by month and day by day, depending on a range of circumstances. And so the SNP only publishes an end of year number within its annual accounts. Yeah, to hide it. They, and, and they'll they'll cherry pick the number. Um, but they, they, they're they just crook, aren't they? Now, I'm not going to go through the rest of this. It's just the um, same old guff that we've gone over before. But I'll leave her there just to remind you what you're fighting. Um, these numbers are weird. They're claiming that there's all these 100,000 initially and it all went down to 82,000. Now it's 72,000 people. But they've put more ballots out than there are people. Now, unless they recall those ballots and reissue them, What's going to happen to those 6,000 extra votes that aren't legitimate? Will they be added in and counted? Um, and the question is, who will add them in and who will count them? There is a great deal of risk of corruption, of sleaze and of scumbaggery because Peter Murrell himself, the most honest man in Scotland, is involved in this, involved in the counting of... The votes that will sh probably see Sturgeon's protégé crowned the next King of Scotland, effectively. And so these questions, of course, will continue to be asked how legitimate is the vote? Is the person that wins really the winner? Um, and like I said earlier, it will probably have to go to the courts to decide. But I shall round this section off. We will come up and we will do the outro and finish the video. I think it's clear that whoever wins will not have a legitimate vote. If the if the winner is, and we're now including the second preference in that, but if there's about 6,000 vote difference between first and second, uh, I think there is room there definitely for a court case, given how many extra votes were sent out to people who weren't necessarily members. So they will have that. It will further divide the party, and that's no bad thing, um, given how many people are leaving it. They've been caught out and rumbled um, and people seeing them for what they are. 
Um, and, you know, whoever wins will have a very short period to try and turn things around before the next sort of election uh, for the Scottish Parliament. Um, and I think at that point, um, they'll, they'll have a hard time getting anywhere close to a majority. Um, they, I don't think there'll be enough to enter into a full-blown sort of uh, arrangement that they have, like, with the Greens at the moment. Uh, so whoever vote, whoever you want to vote for in the next election, uh, look to see who the strongest party in your area is and vote for them, the one that isn't the SNP, and, and get them out. Now, I know there's going to be people, oh, I'll never vote for Tory or I'll never vote for Labour or whatever. Swallow the bitter pill. It's only for one election. Swallow the bitter pill, get them out, and let the grown-ups in the room start sorting out the problems that they have created. Anyway, I shall finish there. Thank you very much for listening. And now is an excellent time to hit that subscribe button. It keeps them legitimate. If we have a louder voice, we can keep an eye on them and they will have to answer for their sins. So do hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell as well for future notice. Also, leave a comment, leave a like and please share the video. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, stay well away from politicians because they're all scum and goodbye.